<laughs> okay, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Making the Most of Your WikiEd Support. Um, we are very happy that you're all here to join us today. Um, I'm Helene Blumenthal, Classroom Program Manager here at the Wiki Education Foundation. So again, um, welcome everybody. Uh, we are all very excited that um, everybody here has decided to incorporate a Wikipedia-based assignment into your courses this term. Um, and so we recognize here at the organization that it can be daunting, especially as, as if this is your first time teaching with Wikipedia. So um, we want to make sure, you know, whether this is your first time or your 10th time doing this, um, that you're utilizing all that WikiEd has to offer. Um, we call ourselves WikiEd for short, so you'll hear us say that a bunch um, throughout the program. Um, so let me make some introductions uh, to begin. So again, I'm Helene Blumenthal, Classroom Program Manager here at the organization. I believe everybody here has heard from me what, um, at, at one point or another. Um, and I essentially oversee the, the courses as they're happening throughout the term. So once you submit that course page on the dashboard, I become your, your main contact here at the organization. Um, and you should feel free you know, throughout the term to reach out to me with any questions you have, um, I may not always know the answer, but I'll definitely get you, you know, to, the, to the people who do. Um, and so this is my colleague, Samantha Weald. Um, some of you might have known her as Samantha Erickson, who she just got married, so congratulations, Samantha. <laughs> um, but Samantha is our outreach manager. Um, so in addition to being a, a critical member of our recruitment team, um, Samantha is the one who interacts with all of our first time instructors in the program. So um, if you're teaching with Wikipedia for the first time, Samantha helps um, set up your assignment, any questions you have about the course page system, et cetera, um, and you know how this is all going to work. Um, and then once you submit that course page on the dashboard again, I, I become the go-to person. And I know sometimes that can be a little confusing that you're working with Samantha and then you're working with me, but that's how we've structured it here at the organization um, to make things run a little more smoothly. And so then here are my colleagues, Ian Ramjan and Adam Highland. Um, Ian and Adam are our content, our Wikipedia content experts. So Ian is our content expert in the sciences and Adam is our content expert in the humanities and social sciences. So every course of ours is assigned to work with either Ian or Adam. Um, and Ian and Adam are longtime Wikipedians. So that's, that's the term used for regular contributors to Wikipedia. Um, but they are also full-time employees at the Wiki Education Foundation. Um, and they are the ones that are actually going to be looking at your students' work um, throughout the term. So if you have questions, uh, you know, very specifically about Wikipedia, is this is this a, a good source? Is this citation correct? Um, you know, et cetera. They're going to be the ones that you want to reach out to. Um, and you can contact them either via email or their Wikipedia talk pages. Um, but we'll get into how you can get help a little bit later on in, in the in the program. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and you and if you're unsure whether you're you, whether Ian or Adam is your content expert, you can always go to the overview tab of your course page, and it will tell you under the details section whether um, whether it's Ian or Adam. Um, and so, you know, I often hear from instructors that they say things like, oh, I, I feel so guilty for taking, your, taking up all this time and asking you all these questions. So unlike Wikipedians who contribute to Wikipedia on a volunteer basis, we, we are not volunteers. We are all full-time employees of um, the Wiki, Edu uh, uh, Wiki Education Foundation. This is our jobs. It's what we're paid to do. So never hesitate um, to reach out for as much help as you need. Um, so, so who is the Wiki Education Foundation? I just thought I would tell you guys a little bit about us before we, before we go ahead. Um, so there's a lot of names out there in the Wiki universe. There's the Wikimedia Foundation and, the, and of course, Wikipedia. Um, so where do we fit in? Um, we are a small nonprofit organization based here in San Francisco. Um, that's where Samantha and I are um, today. Um, but um, Actually, a good deal of our staff is, uh, is also remote, so Ian, Ian and Adam are, are remote staff. Um, Ian is in Michigan, and Adam is in, um, oh my god, Rhode Island, thank you. <laughs> I will send you Hampshire. Um, um, uh, and um, 
so um, we were actually so so yeah we were a completely distinct entity from uh, the Wikimedia Foundation, which is which is the organization that actually runs Wikipedia. Um, this uh, the classroom program, which which you guys are all participants in right now, um, started at the Wikimedia Foundation. So if you have been teaching with Wikipedia um, for a long time, you might have started when the program was there. But um, since 2014, we spun off into our own separate um, entity. And so, um, you know, the mission of this organization is to connect the worlds of academia and Wikipedia. And we do that through a variety of different programs, um, the largest of which is the classroom program, which you guys are, as I said, all participants in. And that's, you know, where we work with professors in the US and Canada um, to support them um, when they have their students contribute to Wikipedia as part of the coursework. Um, and we recruit for the program in a variety of different ways, but one of the most um, one of the most effective ways that we found is by uh, forming partnerships um, with academic associations. So since 2014, we've formalized um, partnerships with nine such institutions, um, ranging from the National Women's Studies Association to the American Chemical Society um, to the Linguistic Society of America, and you can see. Um, are the fullest of our partners on our website um, and you know along with them we strive to improve Wikipedia content in those subject areas um, and so if you have a connection to one of these um, associations um, we'd love to get in touch with them so um, now I'm gonna um, transfer things over to Samantha. All right, I'm going to go ahead and launch our first poll question so it should pop up on your screen you should be able to reply um, I'm going to launch poll now, and the question is, how much content do you think our students contributed to Wikipedia in spring of 2016? And I realize now I also have a typo on the poll, which is my bad. <laughs> oh yeah, I can see people replying. This is exciting. It's like live feeding. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that too. Um, but the, the options are 30,000 words, 300,000 words, or 3 million words. Um, and wow, it looks like pretty close tie between 300,000 and 3 million so far. <laughs> I'm going to give it another few seconds to let everybody get their replies in until it balances. But let's see, five, four, <laughs> three, <laughs> two, one. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll. And it looks like about 60% of you thought that we contributed 3 million words as, as, a, as a whole with our spring 2016 cohort. And about 40% of you thought we contributed about 30, 100,000 words. And the majority of you are correct, because we did, we can, our students uh, working through our program contributed over 3 million words to Wikipedia in the spring of 2016, which I think is pretty incredible. And we worked with about 215 courses. So that's a really incredible number. We're really proud of our students. Okay, so let me get back and go to the next slide. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit today about how you can get the different methods you can use to get help from us here at WikiEd as you go through your course. So obviously, you worked with me potentially to set up your assignment. You've also worked with Helene to set up your assignment. But what's the nitty gritty about how can I get help? And um, the first place that you can do that is ask.wikiedu.org. And this is basically our FAQ site where you can actually live enter questions that you have about your, about your assignment, about how to change your timeline, um, and you'll get live responses from Wikied staff back into ask.wikiedu.org. And the reason we set this up is basically because if you email me a question and I give you a reply, that question and answer doesn't actually get published anywhere for the benefit of other instructors to utilize. So ask is a way where other instructors can see, oh, there have been people who've been asking about grading and, and the best way to go about grading. And so you can actually review all the questions that have been asked um, and all the answers that we've supported and supplied <laughs> in order to help solve the problems that instructors have in our, in our system. Um, okay, let's see the next place so that this is the screenshot of ask and there's a search bar so you can search type in search terms. You can also go through and look at instructor FAQs and so on and so forth. So the, the next way that you can get help is by this handy dandy little get help button on the dashboard. And what that looks like is on everybody's course page. There's this little purple button here that says get help. And if you click that, um, you'll be able to see 
uh, the, the search button for ask. So again, you can type in a, a query into the form and you'll get redirected to ask. But also you can have links back to the interactive training modules in case you feel like, oh, I remember learning something in a training module. I just want to review the training module. You can always go back and review the training modules. And then um, the best thing is you'll also then have linked there information about who your content experts are. And the example I have on the screen is just a test course page and it's still on there. But in the future, when you do access this system, you'll be able to see that it's either Ian or Adam, and then if you click on their name, you'll be able to actually fill out and, and message them privately any questions that you have about your course. Oh, excuse you. <laughs> um, and then, yes, so that's great. And Adam is also offering comments too, which is great in the chat. Thanks, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, so you can type in your question here, they'll be redirected to ask. And then we're going to have Ian's going to tell you a little bit about our resources. Okay, so Wikipedia has lots of complex ins and outs, and there's a pretty steep learning curve for just about everyone getting started. So we've developed a suite of, gui of printed guides, shorter handouts, and the online training modules to get you and your students started on the right track. So if you're interested in a particular resource, you can find them on the instructor section of our website. And there's a full list there. Um, but most of the time, the relevant ones are going to be dispersed throughout your course page. So as you create your course page, they're automatically added or manually added by Helene. Um, and so they'll, they're at the point where they're most relevant, most useful to your students as they're, go as they're going through the course. Regardless of the type of class you're teaching, we recommend that all your students read our newly redesigned editing Wikipedia brochure, the one there. We, um, it's been completely rewritten specifically for students who are editing Wikipedia as part of their coursework. And it's something that they should refer to throughout the assignment. Um, we also have discipline specific handouts ranging from chemistry to women's studies. Um, oh, so I got ahead of myself. So we do have the, one of the things in there is that in the editing Wikipedia brochure is this final review page, which is actually a tool for students to go through and see, did I do this? Did I do this? Did I do this in creating their article? Um, in addition to this, we have subject specific brochures ranging from chemistry to women's studies, which we've created as companions to the editing brochure to see which ones, um, see whether we have one for your subject area, take a look at the instructor's page. Rare in the world today, the editing Wikipedia brochure and all of the discipline specific brochures are available as hard copies that we can mail to you. Um, a surprising number of students have actually uh, expressed appreciation for having printed copies on hand that they can look at, that they can refer to while they're working. And of course, they're also available as PDFs, so if they lose them, they can print them off again. Um, in addition to that, we've developed this suite of training modules. The, uh, the training modules are aimed, we have some aimed at students, some aimed at instructors. When you set up your course page, you probably went through some of the instructor orientation ones. They're designed to be short interactive sessions that your students should take at different points in the assignment. So like the handouts, they're dispersed through the course page and um, they're in the spots where they're likely to be relevant. Start of the course, maybe in the first week or two, the Wikipedia Essentials and the Editing Basics modules are there. Students can take them. Once they've gotten a little more advanced in what they're doing, maybe when they're ready to move their work to the article main space, then they can do the sandboxes and main space module that can help them figure out how to do that part of it. To encourage students to do the training, we recommend that instructors make it a graded part of the assignment. Um, the dashboard shows whether your students are up to date with their, with their trainings. If you assign, say, four modules to your students, you can look at the dashboard and it will, for each student, say how many they've completed and a brand new feature as of last week 
you can click next to their names and see exactly which modules they've completed and when. So these are great tools and I'm, I'm really happy that Sage added that in. Uh, no matter where you are on the assignment, both you and your students can always revisit the training modules. So it may be that you're, you do the image adding one, now you're ready to add an image and you can't remember something, go back, check the module, have a refresher. Before I move on, I would, I would like to, um, to point you to the finding articles module. So if you go to the instructor training page, you'll see down at the bottom, this module, our new module for finding articles. This tutorial will walk you through the basic steps to help you find the articles that are best for your students to work on. Um, after all, you're the experts in the field and you probably have the best sense of knowing what's being able to figure out what's missing and what's best to be added. So now we're back to Adam. We are gonna do another poll question and then I will stop screen sharing and Adam is actually gonna walk you all through the dashboard. I just need to, when we do this, I lose my mouse sometimes. I'm trying to figure out how to get back. Hold on. Come here, little mouse. Okay, hold on. I'm just gonna stop screen sharing. Find the mouse. Here we go. All right, new poll. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the share. And I'm gonna launch this poll so we can all see it. All right, this is the second course, po the second poll. Um, it says, how many courses do you think the Wiki Education Foundation is currently supporting? So this is in the fall of 2016. And you can go ahead and reply. I'll give it about 30 seconds. So the, the options are under 100 courses, between 100 and 200 courses, or over 200 courses. We're pretty an interesting split here. Right now, under 100, we have about 6% of people. Between 100 and 200, 30% of people. And over 200 so far, about 63% of you. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it five more seconds just to make sure everybody gets their responses in. There's three people who didn't vote, I can see. <laughs> 32 of 35. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end poll. Um, so it looks like the majority of responses at 63% were correct. We are currently supporting over 200 courses. So this, this term right now, we have 200, 225 to be exact. 225 right at the exact moment. But we are gonna, we actually expect another 20 or so to come through. So anytime that you ask for help from one, content experts or if you need help from Helene, just remember that we are working to support you know, over 200 courses and over you know, 5,000 students who are working on Wikipedia. So there is quite a bit going on. All right, now Adam is going to go ahead and walk you through all the incredible things that the dashboard can do. So this is the really exciting part of today, I think. So right on time, I'm actually going to show you how we end up supporting uh, so many students. Um, and we've talked a bit about the dashboard throughout the course of this webinar. And you may be thinking, well, this is another place to view where my con where what my students are doing. I already have something like Moodle or Dashboard. But I want to show you in just a short amount of time that these are tools that help us support you and help you view the contents that your students are creating, keep tabs on what they're doing, and it also signifies to the Wikipedia community that your students are supported by uh, Wikied. So the first page that we're gonna look at on the dashboard is the overview page, and this is the page that your students land on first when you send them the enrollment link. Uh, we're often asked whether or not you see a different view of the overview page or the various pages on the dashboard than students do. And with very few exceptions, you and student, the students will see an identical view. We'll talk a bit about um, students are able only to assign themselves articles and not assign articles to other students. But aside from that, everything that you see here um, from my view on the screen and everything that you see when you're logged in and you look at the dashboard will be very similar to what your students will see. So when we land on the overview page, uh, we can we see uh, the current assignment down below, which shows students what is happening this week on the timeline. We see the uh, introduction to the course, which is a, a, a blurb that you write explaining the course to the students. And you can see the contributions and changes that your students have made as a whole. So this is a very easy way to look at a glance to see. Now this is a class from the, um, from the University of Hawaii, uh, my old home state. Uh, and, uh, and you can see that they've added 19,000 words so far. And within the term so far, 
uh, viewers have read, what the students have written. Um, just from starting uh, this, uh, this August, uh, they've, they've read, uh, it's been read 2,500 times. So, and on the right hand side, as you'll see here, you'll see the details for the course. Now we're not logged, I'm not logged in looking at this view so that I don't expose the instructor's email address, but you, when you are logged in, you will be able to change any of these details, such as uh, adding the, be changing the beginning of the end dates of your class or changing the beginning of the end dates of the assignment within the course itself. Um, so now we're gonna pop over to the timeline here. And previously, where we saw the one week view in the overview, that shows you the current slice of where we are in the assignment and the timeline view will show you the entirety of what the, if you're using the wizard, what the wizard has outputted uh, for the, the length of your course. And this is a course which is used uh, our wizard. And um, what we've tried to do is we've, we've built this up over time to produce, to add in um, what we've discovered are best practices for how courses pro progress, um, where we think it's best that students see certain uh, resources. In this case, we want students to look at our editing Wikipedia brochure and our evaluating Wikipedia brochure very early. Uh, we wanna see when students have, um, uh, we, we wanna suggest uh, where students you know, can first see training, but um, this is your course. You are gonna control the ins and outs of it. And so we wanna make sure that the timeline is eminently editable by you. So uh, you can go in and edit any one of these blocks, any blocks that, that you've created previously or the timeline is created for you. Um, we're not, as I mentioned, we're not logged in on this view, but you can move block weeks around and you can change the course on the timeline so that it fits exactly um, what, what you have expected for the students. So, Adam, can you adjust so we can see your face? Uh, yeah. Rather than your chin. <laughs> Sorry about that. Nice. Um, so that is the timeline tab. So now we're going to take a look at the students tab. Now, previously, when we were talking about student training, mentioned that you can easily take a look and see um, when your students have been uh, have been have completed their training. So if we look right here, we look under the student's username, you see that this student has completed three out of the six of the training modules. If you click on the row for the student down below, you can see exactly which training modules the student has completed and when they completed them. Going further down, you can see the last, the last 10 contributions that the student made anywhere on Wikipedia. So if you start from the student tab and you're looking at what um, what your students may be working on, you can click on any one of them to see a link out to any, uh, the page that they've changed. So this student has, their last 10 edits have all been to the same language page. Um, now your students are working on Wikipedia, not on the dashboard. So the dashboard is reflecting the changes that the students have made on Wikipedia, but we wanna make it easy for you to investigate what, the, they, what they have done on Wikipedia itself. So if you click on the, uh, the username, for any student, it will open up a link to their contribution page on Wikipedia. And the contribution page on Wikipedia shows all of the student's additions to Wikipedia whenever they have made it at the moment that they have made it. So when a student makes a change on Wikipedia, it gets committed in the database at that moment and later changes will just update or review it. So when the student says, oh, you know, I, I did this at two in the morning on Saturday, you can go and look up and see, yeah, they actually did do that at two in the morning on Saturday, or no, they didn't because there's no record of it on Wikipedia. But this will show you for this student, every change that they've made on Wikipedia in a reverse chronological order. So we can look here, the, uh, the last change that they've made, uh, we can click on them. We'll come back to what this link is showing exactly, but they added in a reference to a page and specified a page number changing a previous reference. And that's just two clicks in a couple of different ways to get you to what your particular students are doing. Uh, you can also control enrollment on the students page. So if you're just starting your course, when you, when you pop into the students page, you, you, will, you will be looking mainly for who has, which of my students have inside them in the course. And when you view your students, you will see uh, their usernames that they've chosen on Wikipedia and their first and last names next to them. Um, I'm not showing you that I'm here because these are not students in anyone's course here and we don't want to expose their information, but you will be able to see theirs. So you will not have to parse out which of your students is Dylan MK, although that's perhaps not a grand mystery. <laughs> um, so, and you can also sort this list by 
by the number of edits that the students have made recently. So if we sort the it list by recent edits, this, uh, this view captures changes that they've made. So you'll only see students who have made changes in the last few days. Um, and you can sort it by how many characters the students have added into the main space or into the user space to look at students say that have added a lot or students that have added very little um, to find that quickly at a glance. Um, another way to look at the changes that your students have made to Wikipedia is to look at the articles tab. And the articles tab uh, shows you at the first view, the articles that the students have edited at the very top. So any article that your students have edited on Wikipedia will get a row here. So you'll be able to see, even if you're not looking at, I don't know which student is assigned which article, if you just want to see, I want to know what my students have changed on the main, on the main page, or on the main space, excuse me, you can go right here and see the changes that the students have made. So the characters added here are the characters added by students in your course to these articles. If there's more than one student working on an article, that will be inclusive um, in uh, the number of characters here. And the views are the views that this article has seen since your students have started working on it. So these articles have been viewed by a fair number of people just since these students have started working on it. Um, and what you'll see here, the structural completeness is a technical tool that we're working on, which uh, looks for features that a machine learning interface can recognize within Wikipedia articles showing completeness, and we try to show uh, changes in it. And it's not, it, it's, it's still a work in progress, but it will help you uh, track a major changes that students are making in an article, turning it, say, from a stub from a very short article with little definition or features to something that's more complex. You will see the changes happening um, in this little graph, but it is definitely a work in progress. Below the, uh, below the edited articles, you'll see the assigned articles. So these are articles that you have assigned students or students have assigned themselves. Um, and they will show up here regardless of whether or not the student has made an edit for it. This is just an indicator of you scroll down and you can see these are the articles my students should be working on. I can map one student to one article. Uh, at the very bottom of the articles tab, there's a, uh, there's a neat uh, new tool that we want to show you. Now, just this term, we introduced the available articles feature where you as an instructor can preset a list of articles that you would like students to choose from. So instead of a student assigning themselves an article by writing out the text string for the article, the student assigns themselves an article by choosing it from the available articles list. And once they've chosen, it's taken off the available articles list. Now these students are all off and running and working on their articles, so you'll only see there's only one that, that's left on the list. But when you start a new course and you add to the available articles list, students coming to the articles tab will see their list of available articles that they can choose from and pick, and you'll know that they'll be able to pick it up without any, without any issue. Right. So, and you can also, just as a, as a reminder, again, as with the students tab where we clicked out to look at the student contributions, we can click here and look up the history of any one of these articles. So I'll, I'll come back to uh, the, I'm not going to pronounce this, the, uh, the, well, I'll try, but the, the, language, <laughs> the, the, the article for this language is one that students in this, uh, in this course have been working on heavily. If you, uh, you can see either a link to the article itself from the articles page or a link to the article history, which is a chronological listing of all of the changes made to this article. And you can see where those changes have been. So these students made a few changes nine days ago. Um, to this article, adding in, adding in these contributions. And again, that's just another way you can see from that component very quickly what your students are working on on Wikipedia. So next we have the Uploads tab. Uh, this uh, Languages in Hawaii and the Pacific is not a media course. They haven't uploaded any files, so this is not uh, the, perhaps the best one to show you. But um, what you'll see from the Uploads tab or any image that your students upload to Wikimedia Commons, will, uh, you will see which student uploaded it, you'll see a link to the image itself, you'll see a thumbnail of the image, and you'll see an indication if, it's, uh, if, it, ends up being, uh, if, if it ends up being deleted. Um, but uh, if you have a media class, uh, it's the best way to make sense of how to view the uploads tab is to, is to have the students and to take yourself our image training. Um, the last thing I wanna show you from here is the, uh, is the student activity, activity tab. And this is a view of all of the changes made by the students within the, last, uh, within the last seven days. 
So if you just want to look at where are my students working right now anywhere on Wikipedia, if it's very beginning of the course, you maybe your students are working in sandboxes or they're, uh, they're adding comments to other students' talk pages, and you might want to see that here. If it's later in the course, those students are working hard on particular <laughs> articles, and you just want to see, I want to see the most recent <laughs> list from here. And this will show you the, uh, the article, the student who who, who added the article, how much we added, and when it happened. And on the right-hand side, you'll see this uh, short link called diff, which is a, uh, a term of art that Wikipedians use. Well, not just Wikipedians, but this is a link that will show you on Wikipedia the difference between um, when, your student has, when your student has made an edit to an article. So you can capture an individual change that a student makes to an article with its granularity. And we saw this before going from the history list, and we saw this before going from the student contributions, but what we wanna do is we wanna provide you with a number of different ways to see where your students are making changes on Wikipedia and get to that sort of quickly and easily. Um, and to come back to the diff link here, all this is showing you is on the left-hand side is the prior state of the article. So this was before the student made this particular edit, in which case, this, in this case, the student has made multiple edits in a row. So we're just seeing one of their changes that they've made at a time. And on the right is what the student has added. So in this case, they've added a paragraph um, and a, uh, a template and a reference. But if they had taken things away from the, from the, from the page, then the left-hand side would be bigger than the right-hand side. So just one way to see the changes that your students have made. Um, directly on Wikipedia. One last thing that I want to point out, and I hope I can move the view of me out of the way. Uh, we pointed out the get help button before. Um, so if when you're logged in, you will see your and your students are logged in, they click the get help button, uh, they will see links to the training, which we also have links to at the top. You will see links to the frequently asked questions, and this was a question that came up in the chat. Uh, we have a we the asked at wiki.edu is for both students and instructors. When you are logged in and you click on the FAQ, uh, the the system will point you to uh, frequently asked questions for instructors. When your students are logged in, it will point them to frequently asked questions for students. So, if you still need. Uh, if you if you uh, if your students are come here and they say well all right that's all fine and good but I want a question answered you can they can click on the uh, the send a message to their content expert or send a, mes a message to Helene the classroom program manager and they can say help. Oh, sorry, just very quickly. Um, students um, only get Ian or Adam. You guys get me and Ian. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you for that. Uh, no, that's so, okay. So that's another notable actual difference between the student view and the instructor view. So students will be able to reach out to the content expert. You will be able from within the dashboard to reach out to either the content expert or to the classroom program manager. Um, uh, and so if your student sends a message via this interface, uh, the content expert will see a copy of the message, they'll see where it's come from, and the student username, and they'll also see the student email address, so they'll be able to reply to the student via email. Um, and there's, so the student doesn't have to add, you know, I'm user so-and-so mm -hmm. at... Beautiful. So at you know such and such an email address at Gmail. So we will get that information, and the student just has to worry about what their substantive question is. So that's the dashboard in a nutshell. Um, it's a it's a pretty effective tool that allows us and you to look at work that's happening in the course at a glance, and allows your students to get a sense of what they're supposed to be doing, where they can look for for resources, and where they can get help. Uh, and uh, it, it is what allows us to support hundreds of courses and thousands of students each term. Adam, I was just thinking, do you want to take one second and show instructors how to view the student sandboxes and then the associated talk pages for peer review? Sure, that's an excellent question. So, uh, so students that are working on a, a brand new article may choose to start it out in the sandbox, and um, the, the, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the students tab has a link to all of the possible sandboxes that a student that a student may have. So if we uh, click this link for the first student, um, we can see this student has their user page and a sandbox page. And they 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 are not working on a sandbox. I think all of these students are working live, but were these students to be to be looking at the sandbox, then then you would see 
you could see the talk page and uh, perhaps not the best uh, course to look at uh, sandboxes, but yeah. So if your students are working in sandboxes, they will know where their sandbox is because when they are logged in at the very top of the page, there is a link for their sandbox at the top. And you will be able to tell, regardless of if they use that sandbox or they create a brand new page, um, which they will uh, understand how to do after reading the sandboxes and main space training, um, they, uh, you can view it by, by clicking on the uh, sandbox. So in this case, the student doesn't have any sandboxes. Does that, does that uh, answer your question, Samantha? I thought, I thought that was great. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and try and re-screen share if I can find my little guy. The keynote, so we can just go over the last couple things, and then yeah. we will go into our, into our Q&A. So yeah. let me... Yeah. Okay. Let me Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, screen share, desktop, screen share, keynote, play. Cool. So we're going to talk. Uh, Helene's going to talk to you about other ways to engage. Yeah. Um, so now that you guys hopefully have a better sense of, um, you know, how to, how to make the best use of our tools, I wanted to let you know about some other ways you can engage um, with the mission of the organization. So um, we are always looking for guest blog posts. So we love writing about you and your students' experiences, but um, there's no substitute for hearing it um, from you directly. Um, another way to get involved, um, you know, it's, well, the, it, this is actually the same idea is true for our um, uh, conference presentation. So you guys are really our best advocates because you're in the class and you're watching your students doing this firsthand. Um, so uh, we really love to um, present with our instructors at conferences, or you guys um, could host a workshop at your university or run um, a webinar like we're doing today. Um, another way to get involved is through our Visiting Scholars program. So um, another program that we run smaller than the, than the classroom program is called the Visiting Scholars program. And this is where we try and connect Wikipedians to universities so they then get access to that university's library system. So, um, so they can get access to sources, you know, often behind paywalls um, that they wouldn't be able to get readily otherwise. So they can... Okay. No, yes. Yeah, so, use my key, my net. Okay, so so say they can um, you know then make better Wikipedia articles. Um, so you can help us facilitate um, that relationship by um, getting us to the right people at your university. Um, and finally, you can just recruit a colleague to teach with Wikipedia. Um, and if you're interested in any of, of these, you know just let just let me know, and we can give you um, further information. So again. Um, uh, just, just to let you guys know, actually, we're going to be um, we're going to be hosting uh, a few different webinars this semester. Um, another one similar to this in November, where we're going to be in November, we're going to be focusing on um, how to move the work into main space, and that'll be on November seventh, I believe. Um, invitations for that will go out shortly. And our next one is actually coming up next Friday, October seventh. Um, from the same time, 10 to 11 Pacific, and that's going to be focusing on science, communications, and Wikipedia. Um, so not specifically about, you know, wiki, wiki ad and our tools, but a little bit of a broader topic. Um, so again, thank you all for coming today. You know, we, we know that taking on this project can be kind of challenging. Um, so we really do appreciate how much time and, and effort you all put into this, um, into this assignment. Um, but I, I guarantee, I think your students will, will not forget this. <laughs> will not forget this experience. Um, okay, uh, so now we are going to open it up to questions. Samantha, do you want to start? I'm going to go ahead and go stop up. the screen. Yeah, so we'll stop this and then we'll, I can figure out how to do that. There we go, stop the share so then we can actually just be our faces. <laughs> So we've already been replying to a few of you guys in the chat, um, which is great. But there are a few questions that we had. I wanted Ian and Adam to go ahead and take a few minutes to maybe re maybe we can just really quickly read over some of these questions, make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, so let me just take a look really quickly. 
So yeah, this webinar is being recorded. So ask.wikiedu.org, uh, one of the questions was, is it for students or instructors, just instructors? It's for everybody. So there are specific yeah. questions that we have tagged as it, that instructors have asked, which is like, how can I better evaluate my students? How can I edit the timeline? But students are available and should definitely be using the tool to ask questions from the student's perspective. So whether it's, how do I add an info box? Or how do I make sure that my citation my references section is looking proper? Um, you should, all students and instructors should feel free to use it. And again, yeah, if you can't, um, the great thing about ask is if you don't see an answer to your question, um, ask it and we are notified and somebody will get back to you, um, you know, pr pretty shortly. <laughs> and then uh, another question that we got was about the structure of the weeks of the assignment. Um, there's a few things I want to talk about about the timeline. So the timeline is a template that we have created that is hopefully going to be utilized by every course we support but it can be fully customized. So I wanna make sure that every instructor we work with feels comfortable customizing the template to suit their specific needs. So if you wanna do a 12 week project, but you have a couple weeks where you want students working on other work, you're welcome to leave week four blank and have no part of the Wikipedia project being completed that week. You're also welcome to edit any of the template text we provide to make sure it better suits your needs. Um, and you can drag and arrange the weeks in a different order than what we have recommended. So if you want the peer review to happen at the end or a little bit earlier in the term, you should feel free to make any changes that you want. Unfortunately, however, the actual week structure of the template is not changeable. So the idea that you have something that says week one, week two, that's part of the code that we've built and it's also part of our best practices to scaffold the assignments kind of throughout the term. So it's not possible to remove the idea of weeks. Um, what you can do is if you want to do a one or two week project, you could put it all in, in week one, basically. Um, and we can talk about that more offline if people have specific questions about how to make their course page mirror their syllabus in, in a better capacity. And, and just to say, like, so the, and as Samantha said, sort of the, the, the reason we have um, this structure in this way is, and it kind of goes back to the, um, the fact that we're supporting so many courses. So in order for us to like really have a good sense of where our students are at any point in the term, you know, we, we use the timeline as much as you guys um, to know, you know, Ian, so you can know, oh, uh, you know, this class on neurobiology is about to move into main space. Um, and we get that information from the timeline. So he knows to look at that class then. So it's a really important tool um, for us as well, um, you know, when we're, when we're supporting such a large number of students in, and, um, in courses. Cool. I'm just going through, just trying to catch mm -hmm. up with some of the other yep. questions. Um, I just wanted to talk about couple other things. Oh yeah, sandboxes and talk pages. So when your students are logged in, they're able to see on the students tab a list of all their peers in the course, including their Wikipedia usernames. So they can see that my, my classmate Helene, her username is Helene Wikied. Um, they're also able to see a link to that student sandbox. So if they do decide that they want to peer review that student sandbox draft, they can go ahead and click in, they can go to the talk page of the sandbox and they can leave comments there. Um, so that's all viewable. The diffs are also viewable by all the students in the course. So if you have a student, if you have students who are critiquing each other's work, um, the diffs are there to be viewed by anybody who has access to your course page. Yeah, and this is all on the dashboard itself, not, yeah. not Wikipedia. All right, let's see. Um, Ian and Adam, if you guys see anything also, please feel free to hop in. I'm hopping in on chat, so just point to me uh, <laughs> when uh, when you need me to talk. Mm. Access into the two days. Yeah. Okay, a few, a few of the questions in the Q and A. I'll start from the bottom because I've let them scroll up. Uh, can multiple students be assigned to edit the same page? So if you're using the um, the article assignment interface that Adam showed, then only as soon as one student clicks on that button and assigns it to, to themselves, it disappears from that list. But they can always manually add, uh, assign themselves a co uh, an article from the student tab. So yes, and a lot of people do let multiple students work on the same page. It's actually pretty good. It can actually work pretty good, especially with bigger classes. 
Yeah, so when we do a support group work, the way that that looks from the dashboard perspective is every student in the group should assign themselves the article that the group has selected on the students tab. And then you as the instructor are able to see that all these students are assigned the same article. Um, the students then should also basically select a leader in the group whose sandbox space they will work together to draft the work in. So if, if me and Helene and Ian are in a group together, or I'm going to say, Ian, your sandbox is where we're going to draft our work. And then me and Helene can access the work that we all do as a group in Ian's sandbox. And we can work together to build it and so on and so forth. Oh, yeah, no. The critical thing to remember there, though, um, with group work and working in the sandbox of one person is that um, the other group members sh should edit um, Ian's, you know, so let's say it's Ian's sandbox. Samantha and I should still be logged in as ourselves on Wikipedia when we're editing in Ian's sandbox. So our um, edits get, get re recorded in our own edit history as opposed to, e you know, Ian's edit history. Um, and, it's, and, and anybody can edit a sandbox. So it's, it is just like any other page on Wikipedia. So, um, you know, a stu other students would be able to edit um, in another student's sandbox. And there, so, there are a couple other related yeah, questions here. Sure couple questions that were followed up. There's no reason that your students have to start in a sandbox. Working live is, is totally fine. We just encourage students to do that so they get familiar with what is the formatting of Wikipedia? How can I make this work? What does it look like when I add a reference? These kinds of things are skills that they're building. So working in the sandbox to start is often a great way to build those skills, but it's not required. So some of your students, if they want to start working live, and they feel like they can and they're making high quality edits, that's great. Um, this might be some, some of the reasons that work's getting reverted. If people have students, uh, students' work that's gotten reverted in the past, they might not be following all the best practices and they might not have really built those skills yet, and that could be one of the reasons. Um, yeah, Aaron, you asked about assigning students and how do students assign themselves an article. So that was one thing that Adam kind of went over in the dashboard. But the general capacity that what this looks like from a student's perspective is when a student goes to the students tab on the dashboard and they look at their own username, there's a little box next to it that says assign myself an article. And then all they have to do is write the article title into the box. You can also copy and paste it from directly from the Wikipedia article title into the box and then just click assign. Um, it's it's really easy for students as long as they go to the students tab. And there's there's a related question here about does it matter if it's not an existing page? No, you can they can assign themselves a page that doesn't exist yet. Um, it's the same process, mm -hmm. and once the page is created, then it'll automatically. It That's a great great one, Ian. Yeah, and the other question that we had was, can students move faster through the timeline if, if their assignments are progressing at a quicker pace? The, the timeline tab is available to view at any given time by any student. So it's really just, like we said, a list of scaffolded recommendations to walk students through the steps necessary to, to make a really high quality edit. If you have a couple groups that are working at a faster pace, they're very welcome to skip ahead and to go into week seven or week eight early. Um, the overview tab is the only place where they're only able to see the current week's assignment. As long as students are looking at the timeline tab, they should be able to have access to the online trainings, to the tips that Wikiem has provided about how to complete the assignment that week, um, and what to think about for the assignment that week. So as long as they're looking at the timeline tab, your students are welcome to kind of self-pace themselves. Although, like I said, we do want to make sure that they're working to build those skills over the, the weekly process in order to scaffold their work. Um, another question here, uh, I, I have 350 students in my class, they're working in groups. Should they sign up, should everybody sign up individually or should they elect a group leader to sign in? Now, one of the things that Wikipedia uh, dislikes and, well, doesn't allow is group accounts. So basically having more than one person share a, share a single login. Now, so the, um, the, Disadvantage then if you only elect one is that they might be tempted to to share that with their with their classmates. The other thing is by creating their their individual accounts that lets them do the training themselves. So even if one person is doing all the writing, the others get a sense of um, you know how Wikipedia works, how they're doing this, and so I think it would be valuable. I I think it's very valuable to have everybody create their own account. Yeah, so just to highlight, every student should have their own username, and then groups can work together to write the article in one person's sandbox space, but every student is required to have their own username. Yeah. 
There's another question about entering student usernames. The way that you can manually do that, if you want to do that, is again, go into the students tab and there's an enrollment button mm -hmm. and you can actually uh, manually enroll any of your students as long as you have their usernames. The best, way that, the best way that we found though to do this is to have students enroll themselves using the enrollment link that you were given from Helene. Basically what this does is it gives students the option to create a username and then enroll in the course page right one after the other. If you've had any problems with students using the enrollment link, please let us know because that should always be working and it should definitely hopefully be seamless. Yeah, and um, just again, you know, a difference between the instructor's view and the student's view. You as the instructor um, can enroll students. We, we on the Wikia team can enroll students, but your students can only um, enroll themselves. Enroll themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, an, another question here about assigning articles. What's, somebody's asking, what's the advantage of having them assign articles versus just edit? Now, one of the big things that happens when you assign an article is that assuming the page exists, the dashboard puts a little template on the, on the talk page of that article saying that students from this these students from this class are working on it. And that is very, that's a good PR or uh, well, it's a good community relation tool because then other Wikipedians who see these people that they don't know are doing a whole set of edits and a group of people interacting, seeming to work on the same thing, they, they go to the talk page and they can see, oh look, this is a class assignment um, because when a whole set of people suddenly start editing the same page, it, that some Wikipedians will be suspicious that it's, uh, <clears throat> well, you know, that people are trying to, that they're, they're sock puppetry and things like that. So assigning them puts that tab there, makes it clear that students from this class are working on it. And that's just useful if a community member looks in and tries to figure out what's going on. And it, and it also, very, oh, sorry. Pe people are very, um, people tend to be much more, um, well, they let, they, they're willing to, they're, they're far more tolerant of students than other newcomers, by and large. Um, yeah, and, and what it also tells the community is that your course is supported by us, um, which, which um, means, you know, means a good deal. So, like, if there is something happening or an issue, like, you know, they can alert us, and so, and so we can step in, too. So, that, that's a significant part of that as well. Um, there's one question that popped up. So uh, someone asks, if I'm teaching two sections of the same course, can the same page be assigned in each section of the course? Uh, that's absolutely the case. You can assign an article uh, that your students have worked on previously um, in, in a past course. You can assign an article. We've had cases where, where students have been working on articles that other students had previously worked on in, uh, in past classes. Um, and so there's no limitation on, on what articles that you can assign uh, within your courses. And one, one really cool thing that actually happened once is the two different classes assigned were working on the same article. So you had students in completely different universities forced to work together. <laughs> in the same term, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was even cross, cross, cross international with a Canadian course and a US course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, one question asks, can you maintain your course page uh, if students want to continue working on their articles after the course ends? Uh, so, the, that's a very good question. The course page will show you um, what students have worked on during it. It's designed to be, um, I don't want to speak out of school, so, but it's, it's designed to be uh, a record of what's happened during a fixed period of time. But you could, if you wanted to, you, if someone is, if students are working on it after the end date of the course, you can extend the end date. As I mentioned uh, in my dashboard section, when you go to the details section, you can extend the end date of the course and say, I don't think that, I think students are going to continue to work on it for another month or another two months. Um, and that's something that's, you know, uh, within your uh, remit. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the course page, I think, continues to track student work 30 days past the end date. Right. Yeah. And um, the other thing to mention is that all of the course pages will remain historical pages. So they're not ever going to get deleted or removed. So if your students want to access it a month, a month or even a year later, in theory, they should be able to always go back to that URL that is specifically associated with your course and it should still be live. So the um, links to the trainings will always be there. 
There's another question here. Uh, teaching science from a historical context. So students might end up, they might edit science or history. So who is the content expert? Um, sort of it's whoever Helene assigned. <laughs> uh, basically, Adam and I are both pretty broad in our areas of knowledge. So there's, you know, there, there, there are a lot of areas where either of us could, could work. At the same time, if, say, I had a class where people are doing something in economics and I have no idea what's going on, I can always just ask Adam to take a look at this. I, and I think, I think Ian, you've been assigned to most of the history of science courses, but I mm -hmm. could be wrong about that. But, you, but again, you can just always see, go to your course page, see whether it's Ian or Adam. Also in the follow-up um, email that I sent to you guys, um, after your course page has been approved, um, I always include who your content expert is in that um, email as well. And, you know, and yeah, just along those lines, typically, you know, Ian works with the sciences and Adam with our humanities and social science courses, but, um, you know, once in a while, some of these get redistributed um, to even out the, the workload a little bit. So that's why you should always just check to make sure whether it's Ian or Adam that you're working with. So uh, Kevin Coulter asked that, uh, says the editing and evaluation brochures are updated from last year. I only have the brochures from last year. Can you send the links from the new versions? The links that are in your training should link to, uh, they link to a redirector on our site that goes to, uh, that goes to the current, <laughs> both of those. Um, and the link that we added at the beginning with the, uh, the four instructors link will have links to, to both of the, uh, the new ones. So if you look on your timeline for your course, you should see a link to both the new editing and evaluation brochures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're, we only have a couple minutes left here. So I just wanna make sure that you guys also know that us here at WikiEd, we work every term to continue to improve our best practices, to improve our technical support. So every year we do roll out new technical features for the dashboard and we're also always working to create new subject specific brochures um, to be more encompassing of what our students are doing. Um, so if you have ideas or suggestions for ways we can improve our work, always feel free to email one of us, any of the four of us really, and we can work with our colleague Sage who does all of our technical support. Um, and I'll let Helene take over at the very end just to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. Bye. <laughs> um, all right, are we any, are we, any more questions? Or I, think we're, yeah, I think we're good. Well, again, um, thank you to everyone for coming today. Um, you know, we, we really appreciate it. We hope that you found this helpful. Like I said, you know, we, 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 we do get that this is, um, you know, can be overwhelming, especially the first time that you do it. So um, I hope that you see that we've, we've done our best to make this, you know, as smooth a process for you as possible. Um, so again, um, reach out if you have any, if, if the question occurs to you after this, um, you know, send me an email, send Ian, Adam, Samantha an email, um, and one of us will get back to you, or look on ask to see if the question's already been answered. Yeah. Um, and if it has it, um, ask it so we can let others see the answer as well. Uh, just quickly, do we, so there's some questions in the Q&A that we didn't get to. Um, oh, okay. Um, do we have, what are we, do we have a process? Are we going, shall we, since we know who they are, since we know who people are, should yeah. we? Yeah. Sure. Well, I'll have, I'll have a yeah. follow up by email. Yeah, we will. So yeah, for questions that were not answered, we will follow up with you um, the email. That's a good, good call again. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. We're yeah. ending like 30 seconds early, so I think it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great Friday and weekend. Bye. 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 Nice.